one terribly stormy night, a horseman was making his way with difficulty through the forest. As he went along, the branches of the trees struck against him, and the wind was so strong that the poor man nearly fell from his horse two or three times. Come on, Ricando, we must not stop. We're lost, but we must go on. My children and above all my dear beauty will be waiting for me at the house. There! There's a light through the trees over there. We're saved! Giddy up! It's very strange. This palace seems to be empty. I took my horse down to the stables. A poor animal was nearly dead. Oh, I'm now in a magnificent dining room. There's a table all set, and it's laden with hundreds of tempting dishes. Oh, well, the people who live here will soon come, I'm sure. I'll sit down by this fire and rest while I'm waiting for them. I must have gone to sleep in the corner of the fireplace. Oh, I'm hungry. Nobody has come, so I'm going to have something to eat. I'm sure they won't mind. Then I'll go to bed and I'll apologize to my invisible hosts tomorrow morning. Wonderful sleep. The sun's shining now. Come on, get up, you lazy fellow. But what's this? My coat was all wet and crumpled when I took it off and put it on this chair last night. Now it's been cleaned and ironed. The people who live here must be very kind hosts indeed. Oh, what's that I see through the window? A magnificent garden. And the roses. I've never seen such beautiful roses. I really must take some back to my daughter Beauty. I promised her before I went away on my journey. I must say I'm just a little bit ashamed of picking these roses, but there doesn't seem to be anybody around. This must be the palace of a good fairy. Now, where's my knife? I'll just cut some of these red roses here. You are a most ungrateful fellow. I saved your life by welcoming you into my palace. And to thank me, you are stealing my roses, the things I cherish most in this world. You must die. Oh, sir, sir, I kneel before you and humbly beg your pardon. I had no idea that you would be so angry if I picked a few roses to take back to one of my daughters. In spite of your terrible appearance, sir, you are surely not going to kill me for a little thing like that. Don't call me sir. I don't like flattery. 
So you needn't think that you can move me like that. But you said you were taking the roses back to one of your daughters. I will pardon you on the condition that this daughter agrees to die in your place. If she refuses, swear to me that you will return here to receive your punishment. I swear it. Beauty, why do you insist on going to the Beast's Palace? There is still time for you to turn back. Now that I've kissed you and your brothers and sisters for the last time, I really don't mind dying. I'm old and you are young. Father, please don't talk about this any longer. I've already told you times without number that I'm not going back on my decision. The Beast wanted you to die because I wanted a rose. So it's only fair that I should die in your place. Well, beauty. We have arrived. Let's go into the palace. The beast can't be as wicked as all that. Look at the meal he has served us on gold plates. <laughs> Perhaps he wants to fatten me up before he eats me. I congratulate you upon keeping your promise. Tell me, beauty, did you come without being forced to? Yes, beast. Beauty, you are very kind. As for you, sir, you will leave here tomorrow morning and never travel past this way again. Beauty, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, beast. Ah, oh, beauty. I nearly die with fright every time I see this beast with his lion's face. Please leave me here alone, child. Now, father, you must go tomorrow. But please don't worry. I know the beast will have pity on me. Let us have our dinner, and then we can go to bed. Good morning, Father. Did you sleep well? I didn't sleep a wink. I was so worried. Listen to the dream I had last night. I dreamt that a fairy came to me and said, Beauty, I am very pleased with you. The kind action that you did in giving your life to save your father will not go unrewarded. Then she disappeared. I'm sure the beast isn't as horrible as you think he is when you look at him. So go away happy, dear father. Goodbye, my beauty, my angel. May heaven protect us. Cursed be the day that I set foot in this palace. It's not for me to say. You are the master. No, 
There is only a mistress here, and the mistress is you. You've only got to tell me to go away if I annoy you, and I will obey straight away. But tell me something, will you? Don't you find that I'm very ugly? I, I can't tell a lie. It is true that I find you very ugly, but I think that you are a very kind person. You are quite right about my being kind. But in addition to being ugly, I'm not clever. I know perfectly well that I'm just a stupid beast. It's not true, and I like talking to you. Have your supper then, beauty, and try and not be too bored in your house, for all the treasures in this palace are yours. I should be most unhappy to think that you are not enjoying yourself here. I would like to know what has become of my father. Just look into the mirror which is opposite you. Oh, oh I can see my father and my sisters. Sad my father looks. Everything has faded away now. Thank you very much indeed for granting my wish. And I had a most excellent dinner. Thank you very much. I'm going to leave you now. But there's something I would like to ask you. Will you? <laughs> 